what we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting for the pension trust fund. And we'll just go over the basics here. So when we're talking about a pension trust fund, it's part of the fiduciary funds here under, for under governmental accounting. And those would like include the private purpose trust, the investment trust funds, and then the pension trust funds. That's what we're going to be looking at here. And also they would include the agency funds here. But when we're talking about this pension trust fund, that's really the public employees retirement system, the funds that they have here for the, their pensions here under the retirement system. Okay, so first off here for the pension trust fund, the key items here. It's based on actuarial requirements here of the employees under the trust fund here. And secondly, increases in the pension resources come from employer and employee contributions, investment earnings here, and net appreciation or depreciation in the plan assets. And the assets belong to the employees. And thirdly, you're going to be re reporting changes in plan assets as additions and deductions. We'll look at that feature here. And fourthly, you're reporting plan and net assets as receivables and investments. And uh, lastly, you're going to be using normal accrual accounting. And the investments are going to have to be reported at their fair value. So the first thing that we want to be looking at here when we're reporting changes in the pension plan assets. And the key is here. Uh, it's really to do with the account titles here, and well, I'm just showing them in T-account form here. So first off, for normally we'd be reporting revenues here when we talk about governmental accounting for any uh, increases that we'd have here in re revenues received. But when we're talking about the pension trust fund, we use the term here additions rather than revenues. So here you'd have your additions here and you'd have to put in for whatever con a contribution it was here, but those really represent the revenues here. So what that would include here as under additions here uh, would be like contributions and investment income. And then you'd have some either appreciation or, depreciate, or depreciation here. But that would really be under the investments account here. But you, nonetheless, you have to in, uh, understand that the earning additions here would have to include any increases or decreases here in your investment account. And you really, this is your fair value adjustment here for appreciation or depreciation in your investments. So just remember here for any, when you see uh, pension funds here, look, when you see the uh, term additions here, or when you're recording any uh, revenues here uh, in the pension fund, use the terminology here, additions rather than revenues. And then moving over to our expenses over here, this is where we refer to our expenses as deductions rather than expenses. So when you typically see expenses uh, or when you're having to record expenses here in the pension trust fund, record them at, under the terminology here, deductions. So here we would have deductions here and again in the pension fund. And those would be like benefits paid, refunds paid to uh, employees here under the pension fund and ad administrative administrative expenses and so forth so key feature here when you're dealing with the pension trust trust fund uh, for any revenues here received uh, record them as additions or refer to them here as additions here and for any expenses here in the pension trust fund record them as deductions or refer to them as deductions okay so let's just go up here and look at just the some key features here with the pension trust fund. So we're going to be just, remember this is uh, uses normal accrual accounting and you have to report your investments at their fair value. So whatever you can imagine here uh, for the pension trust fund, use normal accrual accounting. So let's look at the case here for pension funding with an unfunded obligation. So we have an actuarial requirement here that uh, the uh, general fund is going to have to make a contributions to the pension fund here for $45,000. But what's going to end, 15000 of the 45000 is going to be unfunded. So what we're going to do in this example, we're going to transfer a percentage of those dollars now from the general fund to the pension trust fund. And the remaining uh, money here is going to be transferred in the future. So what we're doing here when we're talking about pension accounting, we'll pay for uh, our pension funding, say out of our general fund, we're making transfers from our general fund into 
our pension fund. But in this case here, we're only going to transfer out a portion out of directly out of our general fund uh, of cash into the pension fund. But the remaining amount here, we're going to set up as a liability, and it's going to be included in the general long-term debt account group for an unfunded pension obligation. Okay, so let's just go through our example here. So first for that, uh, we have the $45,000 actuarial uh, requirement here, but we're going to leave $15,000 unfunded. So for, for that gives us $30,000 here that's going to be transferred directly to the pension trust fund from our general fund. So in your general fund here, your cash account, you're going to credit it or reduce it here for $30,000. And then in our general fund, this is the key here. We're we're going to use the terminology here, expenditures here. Now, but when we get down to the pension trust fund, we would refer to those as deductions, just to make the point here. So when you see the expenditures, that's under your general fund. All the other funds use the terminologies expenditures, but when the pension trust fund, they use the word deduction, just to make that clear here. So for our under our general fund, we have the expenditures here, debit that here for $30,000 for the transfer that we're making current uh, now here. So we're going to transfer to the pension trust fund now those $30,000. Now, uh, looking at our unfunded portion here, that $15,000, this is where we're going to have to set it up in the general long-term debt account group for unfunded pension obligation. Remember, the general long-term debt account group is reported here under the general fund, but you keep your uh, long-term debt out of the general fund itself. You have to go through this general long-term debt account group. Okay, so we got that 15,000 of unfunded pensions, so dollars worth. So this is the key here. You put it in your general long-term debt account group here as amount to be provided here. So debit that uh, in the amount to be provided here in general long-term debt group here as $15,000. That's what we're going to have to transfer in the future here. So we set it up as a liability. And then the associated credit is going to go to the unfunded pension obligation. Again, in your general long-term debt account group. Credit that here for $15,000. So this is a transfer to the pension fund that we're going to make later here. So just to make the distinction here, when we got, when you see an unfunded uh, portion here of a pension or you get an unfunded portion, it has to go through the general long-term debt account group here, uh, in, get, in this case for the unfunded portion. And that general long-term debt account group here is associated with the general fund because the general fund is going to pay for this here, but it would the general, we, we, this is long-term debt here, so we have to separate that out here from the general fund only in this, in what we call the general long-term debt account group. Okay, so we transferred 30000 now, and we set up the remaining 15000 to be transferred here in the future to the pension fund. And then just going down to the pension fund itself, your entries would be here in your cash account here. You're going to debit the 30000 here that you would have received here from moving up to your general fund. You credited or moved it out of your general fund here, the cash amount, and you would have debited or increased your cash amount here in the pension fund for $30,000 here for the transfer. And then in your pension fund here, you're going to have a receivable here from the employer, and that's that receivable here that we would have had for the unfunded, unfunded pension obligation here in a long-term debt account group. So receivable from the employer in our pension fund, debit that here for $15,000. So the 30000 came from transfer from cash increase here comes directly from the general fund. The 15000 here receivable is going to be from the general long-term debt account group here. And then total, this is the case here where we talked about those uh, reporting your revenues here. Uh, instead of revenues, we have down additions here for the contribution by the employer here, and that is for the total amount, the cash rate, 30000 received now, plus the receivable in the future here, 15000 So additions, uh, contributions to employer in our pension fund, credit that here for $45,000. That's the total funding. So just remember, rather than revenues here, when you're talking about the pension fund, use that terminology, additions here. 
and that would be the increases here and that's going to be refer and then title it contribution here from the employer okay so you've seen what's going on here we take whatever cash we're getting now we've taken that from the general fund and transferred it into the pension fund here and then any future transfers here those would have been the what we call the unfunded pension obligation going through the general long-term account a long-term debt account group here under the general fund and those would be included as our receivables here and then recognize again the total additions or contributions for that actuarial requirement here uh, total funding here what we receive now and what we're going to get in the future okay okay so next item here other key item here when you're talking about pension accounting we'll look at the pension fund reporting the investments or assets at the fair value and just basic entries here so for our, the second case here we're going to have some investments that are being carried at four hundred and twelve thousand dollars so that's sitting on the books here at four hundred and twelve thousand dollars but now there's been a fair value on those asset investments here now we're looking at a fair value went in and determined their fair value to be four hundred thousand dollars so this is the case here where we're going to have to make some adjustments so again looking at our investments account here in the pension fund our carrying value we had a debit or increase here in our investments at four hundred and twelve thousand dollars the carrying value of those investments now we have to make an adjustment so uh, to their fair value we had four hundred twelve thousand went down to four hundred thousand so we got a twelve thousand dollar adjustment that we're going to have to make so we make that adjustment here directly to the investments account we had four hundred twelve thousand we're going to adjust it down here credit it or reduce our investments by twelve thousand dollars that's our adjustment here off of base we have the carrying value here so our net carrying value is now four hundred thousand dollars here on our investments account and what we would do here for we had the credit or reduction here in our investments account now we the debit or the increase is going to go to net depreciation here for the fair value of that investment here again in our pension fund here so we would debit our net depreciation here for twelve thousand dollars that fair value adjustment so this is where we made our fair value adjustment where we had a depreciation down here in our fair value debt so we have the credit reduction in our investment account and then the increase or the debit is going to go to net depreciation here in our uh, fair uh, fair value adjustment so you can see this net depreciation is just a like an, a, a contra here too or it's, that's where that's where you're going to report it in here in your uh, under your pension fund now if the case was the case here where we instead of having say the four hundred and twelve thousand dollar carrying value it went up to well whatever the different four hundred twenty four thousand here or we had an say we had rather than in a reduction here in a fair value we had an increase here in the fair value of those investments so this is where you'd have to set up your net appreciation account here for that fair value inve in investment here so in this case we'd have a fair value adjustment for the appreciation we credit that here for twelve thousand dollars that would be a just adjustment for if there was an appreciation and if that was the case here our investments account well we rather than have any decrease here obviously we would have had an increase we would have debit our investments account for that increase here of twelve thousand dollars and that would have brought what our carrying value from four hundred twelve thousand up to let's say four hundred and twenty four thousand dollars so the key areas here in in pension fund reporting your investments or your assets report them at the fair value so you have to determine their fair value and then you're going to have to make your adjustments here to your investments account here and you have to re report them here so an investments account any increases here in your investments account you're going to report them as net appreciation here you'll make your direct uh, adjustment here in your investments account the particular investment account in this case you'd be increasing it up or debiting it at that amount and then the credit would go to net appreciation and be increasing that and then in the case here again where we had a reduction here in our investments account uh, fair value we have to reduce it down here we'd be reducing directly reducing our investments account here and then we'd be recording it as net depreciation here for the fair value adjustment again in our pension fund here we'd be debiting or increasing that here okay so 
last, just remember here, when you're dealing with pension funding, use normal accrual accounting and make sure your investments are recorded here at your fair value and make proper adjustments. So again, the pension funds, there are major funds here and there's a lot of uh, trans it can be a lot of transactions with them, but really you're holding investments and you're looking at uh, uh, your investments here that you're carrying your investments and then uh, additions and, and then moving back up here, you're going to have in your pension fund itself, you're going to have additions here and contributions here. You're going to have increases in pension resources here. These additions and contributions here are going to come from employer employee contributions. You're going to have investment earnings here. And then again, you're going to have net depreciation or depreciation or appreciation here in your investments here. Now, I didn't show the deductions here, but just remember, we if, if you're going to go through, rather than an additions and contributions account here, you're going to go through an expense account here for deductions here for benefits paid, refunds paid to the employees, administrative expenses, and so forth. But none, nonetheless here, just when you're dealing with pension funds, just go through, use normal accrual accounting, and then record your investments at their fair value.